Excellent. So, hi everybody. Uh, thank you very much, very much for for coming tonight. My name is Dustin Searcy. I'm the game warden for the the call it the Plainfield District. It's really the northern half of of Washington County. So I cover from Middlesex up to Cabot and Woodbury. Um, I've been doing this job about eight years. It'll be eight years come July. I used to be down in southern Vermont, but now I cover this area. And for those of you that don't know, um, Game Wardens, we work for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And you know what we do is anything from what I'm doing tonight, public outreach about nuisance wildlife to, to responding to nuisance wildlife calls. Um, we're law enforcement officers, so we also do law enforcement related to fish and wildlife law. Um, but we also do recreational enforcement as well. Recreational enforcement means snowmobile, boating, ATVs, you know, anything, anything in between. Pretty much anything anyone likes to do outside, fun, and there's some laws with it, that's what, that's what the Game Wardens patrol. Um, so, so, so that's what, that's what I do, but, but again, public outreach is a big part of what we do as well. So, and specifically tonight, I want to talk about, about bears. And so, and I don't have a PowerPoint or anything. The way I, I see this, this um, talk going tonight is I'll probably talk for, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, maybe not even that long. And I'll kind of just go through the common issues that people have, which are trash, bird seed, bees, domestic livestock, and, and building damage. These are kind of the top things, um, with trash being at the top of those. 46% of our bear complaints are trash related. And compost is lumped in there as well. And we haven't teased out how much of those are compost um, specific. So I think that's a category we will get into eventually as far as data collection. But right now, it's all lumped into one, the vast majority of which is, is trash and not, not compost. So, but specifically why I wanted to do it this year um, and talk about this is because last year we had four goat attacks in East Montpelier and, and unfortunately a couple of those goats ended up, ended up dying and, and it, was, it was really sad and I think it was really shock, it was a really a, a big shock to the system for, for me and for the town and that was the first time I'd ever had anything like this in my eight years. I'd had the occasional, you know, a bear try to get a sheep or something of that nature, but definitely never harmed the animal. And in this case, you know, to, to actually grab a hold of four, four goats, uh, it was likely one bear, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, last year, we did set out a trap to attempt to catch the bear, um, but we did not, but we did not catch it. So I don't know what happened to this, to this bear. Um, I, have a, I have a theory that it either learned its lesson because it, one of the goats it did attack uh, was a ram and I think it got rammed a few times in the head. So either the thing learned its lesson or it got severely injured. Don't know for sure though, because we never actually we never actually saw this bear. Uh, we never actually caught it, but likely the same bear doing it. So, so yeah, what I want to do now is go through kind of the hot topics of what the issues are, um, how to solve some of these issues. But then I really just see, we have a relatively small group here tonight, so I think we can just open it up for questions when I get to the end of the, again, 20 minutes or so. And we can kind of dive into those specific situations that, that some folks might have any specific questions. Because I can talk generally about what to do, but I think talking about people's specific situation, you know, how their trash is set up or how their beehives are, are set up, you know, or, or whatnot, might be, able, might be helpful to answer those specific questions for folks. Um, and, then, and then in a perfect world, everyone here and on Zoom will help spread the word. Because at the end of the day, it's, a, it's definitely a community effort. Because, you know, let's say, let's say everyone on, on Zoom here does a great job, does everything I say, but then, no offense to two, two people in the room here, maybe you guys don't do everything I say, and, but you guys are neighbors to them. The Bears will still learn to associate people and buildings and chickens and goats with food. And the goal is to ruin that association for the bears. And it really does take a community-wide effort. So, so let's start talking about, about trash. Um, but actually, let me, let me back up a little bit. I'll, I'll give a little bit of a background on, on bears, I suppose. So, so black bears are, are a big game animal in this state, which is what we classify them for the Fish and Wildlife Department. And why do they wake up so hungry? Well, it's because they, they quote unquote hibernate. And I'm using finger quotations because they don't have, they don't go into what nutritionally is a hibernation. Hibernation is a very, very deep state of low lethargy, low me uh, metabolic state, and they pretty much can't be woken out of it unless you, <laughs> they, for the most part, they can't. They most go in, this is what they call a torpor. So it's a low meta lower metabolic state, not quite hibernation, but similar. You, uh, rac raccoons do it as well. And um, part of the reason is for that is because they give birth during winter. So they need to have some sense of, oh, I gotta wake up now. Um, and so they actually, they give birth during winter and then they nurse through winter as well. 
And so nursing through winter is a very metabolically demanding thing, a very high energy thing. Um, and so to produce milk, so they wake up and they are, they are famished. So the males as well, just because they burned all their fat through the winter, but especially the females, because they need to continue, well, they need to basically regain the fat that they lost in order to produce the milk. The fat produces the milk and that's how they feed, feed their young. And then, and then for the males, it's equally as important because they need to be, to be big and strong to patrol their area and to look for females when it comes to the breeding season. And so that's why they wake up so hungry. And then towards the end of the season, during the fall, they also have to pack on those pounds to get ready for the, again, hibernation, finger quotes. So, so that's why they eat so much, right? And that's why they come out so hungry and so ravenous. So what do they look for? They look for trash. And again, 46% of our calls are related to trash and compost. And I think it's just because everybody produces it. Everybody produces trash. And, and compost in some way, shape, or form, whether you're actually actively composting or not, everyone produces it. So I think it's just a simple matter of numbers. It's not that people are bad at taking care of their trash, it's just a numbers game. If everyone produces trash, more, that's gonna be the easiest thing that's accessible for those bears, right? So how do you take care of your, of your trash? So ideally what you do is, and there's, it depends on what you have. So if you have a trash, um, like a toter on the side, ideally you don't bring it out until the morning of pickup day. Um, and that can be a little difficult, especially if you have like a 5 a.m. pickup. So you gotta work with your waste haul, you gotta find out what their schedule is and try to work with that. Because if you leave it out the night before, the bears will learn that. The bears will learn what pickup, what pickup day is and they just learn these routes over, over the course of the season. And, they, and I see a lot of head nodding and I'm sure there's head nodding <laughs> uh, you know, metaphorically on Zoom here, but yeah, that's, that's, what they, that's what they will do. And so ammonia is really good if you have to leave the trash outside. The problem with ammonia, and what you can do with ammonia is you're going to have a, either a soaked rag. Kitty litter. Kitty litter? Kitty litter. So that can work as well. Because yep. the ammonia in the litter. That's what I do every, every night before yep. garbage pickup. Yep. I empty the cat box. And, that's, <laughs> and, it's, and it's because, for people listening here, so it's, it's specifically because of the ammonia. When, when, the, cat, when the cats pee, it's, it's a very bad smell. And it smells bad to us, so it smells really bad to a bear. So a bear's smell is about... Uh, nine times as strong as a bloodhound, do a bloodhound, a bloodhound tracking dog, and that's the best tracking dog known, known to man. And so, so we're talking thousands of times stronger than our sense of smell. So if it smells bad to us, it just it's it's horrific. That smells horrific to a bear. It actually it actually hurts their nose. It's, it smells so bad. So kitty litter works great. Um, straight ammonia is a bit better just because it's the straight ammonia. Um, and some people, when they say kitty litter, some people then associate that to, to poop. So, so they actually love diapers. So if you've got a, a baby like I do, don't assume that your diapers are gonna keep the bear away. They, they love diapers. I don't know what it is. Actually, I think I have, I think, well, I have, I have some idea. This is, I think, cause I think, I think baby poop is kind of sweet compared to, to, compared to other like cat poop. Um, and so, I, so they smell that and they smell that and they think, it, they think it's great and they think it's, they think it's delicious for some reason. But also a lot of diapers have like a perfume smell to them so that can attract them. Right. And, and, it, and again, just to kind of emphasize their smell, even something like birdseed, if you leave out birdseed, with the wind in their direction, they can smell, smell that from a half mile away, if, if not more. And so it smells like nothing to us, but to them, they can really pick up on that. So something that really smells like, like diapers, um, they, can, they can pick up on that. So cat litter is not the same as poop. So cat litter, good, just diapers, bad. So it's, <laughs> well, it's, yeah. Yeah, ammonia is great. So you can either splash it in there or you can keep a rag soaked in there just on the top or and just you can, you can have a, the cut out part of a yogurt can or, or a soda can and just hang it on the inside with like, with like a wire or something. Um, and all the way, if it's a trash toter, it'll probably just get dumped during, during pickup day. So really the simplest thing to do is to have a thing of ammonia, splash, splash it in every time you bring it out. Um, and that's really good if you're leaving it in a shed or garage too, because then, because I've had calls, several calls where bears will go into damage a garage or damage a shed to get the trash. So even if you're keeping your trash inside of a, a shed or garage, ammonia is a really awesome thing. It's really only not a great idea is if you're leaving it, say if you have to leave it inside the bathroom until pickup day, because that's your only, only option, right? I wouldn't do that just because ammonia, if it builds up and it gets too hot, it can actually, it can actually it's not good for you. Right. So if it's inside, don't use ammonia until it's going outside. Um, and then if you get, if you say you live in an apartment or if you, multiple people, um, if you're like using a dumpster, sorry, I'll silence that. 
If you're using a dumpster, it's a little more complicated because, so Casella is really the only place in the area that will offer a bear resistant dumper, dumpster, excuse me. And, and it's bear resistant, it's not bear, it's not bear proof. What they do is for an extra 30 bucks a month, they will um, put in some effort and, and kudos to them honestly, because other, no one else is doing this. They'll still reinforce the lid um, and they put some, some chains on it. Which again, the bear, uh, uh, a really determined bear could get through that, but it's certainly better than nothing. So if you have Myers, or if you don't want to spend the extra 30 bucks a month, you can either get a good piece of plywood, three quarters inch piece of plywood, you can put it, put it on top and you ratchet strap that down. And again, if you're in an apartment building or if you have multiple people using it, it can be difficult because you gotta get everybody on the same page and everybody has to use it the same way, which is why getting some sort of bear resistant dumpster if you have Casella is probably, is probably the way to go because it'll be easier to understand how to, how to use it. And, and what, I'm, what I'm gonna talk about with all these things is that there's, there's tiers of intervention, right? So like if we're talking about trash, the lowest tier is doing nothing, right? Just hoping nothing happens. I don't recommend that strategy, especially in this area, because once the, <clears throat> once the bear finds it, it's gonna be so much more difficult to stop that activity. Um, which actually this is probably a good segue to talk about bear behavior, really bear, let's call it bear training or, or untraining, which can really be linked to like training, training a dog. So if we know anything about, about training dogs or heck, even training a toddler, I've got a toddler, um, positive reinforcement is, it works way better than negative reinforcement. Um, we know that about dogs, we just, we just know that. Um, science has proven that, psychology and even animal psychology. So the problem is, is we can't use positive reinforcement on a bear. There's no way to positively reinforce that bear to be in the woods. There's, we just have no way to do that. We can't reward the bear for being out in, in the woods because it's illegal to feed a bear. And even if it was, if we put food in the woods, there's probably just gonna put it closer to another house. It's just, it's just not gonna work in this state. We don't have giant pieces of woods. And then even if we did do that theoretically, um, all the bears would go to the same place and they would kill each other over the resources. So it's, it's, it's a terrible idea. So that's why we don't do that and that's why you can't do that. So you can't positively reinforce that bear. So the only tool we have is the negative reinforcement. And on, that, and on the flip side of that, again, the positive reinforcement is every time they come to your house and they get bird seed or they get trash, that is a positive reinforcement. You are not, not and I say you, I'm speaking to everybody and everybody in the state. Um, we, and I, we as a, as a collective, you know, as collective citizens of the state are training these bears to come to our homes and to associate homes with people and people with food. And that's why we say a fed bear is a dead bear because whether you're intentionally doing it or not, Every single bear that has ever caused an issue and that's had to be unfortunately killed by the department is because they have been started on something small, trash or bird seed. Our biologist, Jackie, she likes to say it's the, it's the gateway drug. <laughs> the garbage and, and bird seed is the gateway drug to breaking into cars, to breaking into houses, and God forbid hurting people, which has happened, I think six times in the history of this state. Um, luckily, no one's, no one, only one person's ever been killed and that was a hunter back in 1943. And, uh, and he shot the bear, went up to, to his quarry afterwards. His bear wasn't dead yet, and the bear mauled him to death. And so, so super sad for that hunter and for, and for that family. Um, but also, hunter, hunter likely should have, had, should have had his firearm with him. And everything else has been, uh, has been related to some sort of activity, either dog walking or trash, or most of those actually have been, the bear has been, again, started on trash and got habituated to people. So these 46% of calls, I'm gonna spend a good chunk of time talking about trash because all of these bears, whether, whether they, goodness forbid, attack a goat or goodness forbid, attack, attack a person. And again, the person thing is very, very rare, doesn't happen, I had the hundreds of calls. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about six in the last, in the last. So I said since 1943, we've been recording it since before then. So we're talking, I don't know, 80 years probably. So very rare, I wanna make that clear. Um, most bears are just absolutely terrified of people. They're just like big raccoons. If you yell at it, it's gonna, it's gonna run away. But the reason why we're talking about this is because the bears do have potential to cause that damage. They have potential to cause harm. And it makes people nervous because it is such a big animal and because they aren't, because they can get to a point where they're not afraid of people. So the goal is to nip this thing in the bud and get these bears never to that point. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, go back to talking about trash now. So if you're in a situation where where say you have a toter or you have, or you have trash in, in a dumpster, or let's say, let's say, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick an example here. Let's say you cannot leave your trash inside. 
That's, that's not an option, not an option, right? So the higher levels of intervention could be something like, um, actually, this is going to be good. So this, is, so this thing's a critter getter. Um, and so if you have to leave something outside, and this will really work for, so this, this shoots out, I'll explain this. So this shoots out a beam, or I don't know if it's lasers. I'm going to call them lasers. I don't know what they are. But it shoots, it shoots out some sort of detection at a 45 degree angle from each side. So it covers a, a basically 90 degree plane. And I think it goes out about 25 feet. So it covers a decent size area. Perfect for covering the area of a trash receptacle, right? Or even a small garden. I've used this thing at, at my house to get rid of to get rid of woodchucks. And of course, the second I put it away, the woodchucks the woodchucks came back. Yeah. So this, this thing works really well for um, for a lot of things. The downside is it's about 90 bucks. Um, but I'll show you. I'm going to show you. It's very loud, so I'm going to show you how how it works. The reason it's 90 bucks. You can get cheaper ones on Amazon. Again, levels of intervention depends on how much you want to spend on it. I heard a quote recently. There are no solutions. There's only trade-offs. So this will work, this will work really well, but the trade-off is you gotta spend more. You could, use the, you could do the $25 one, but it might not work as well. The reason is because this one, one, it's a lot louder. Two, it changes the noise it makes. So it has different pitches, different volumes, so it really freaks the, freaks the animals out. Because the other ones will just emit a light and just go beep, 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 beep. You'll see with this one when I, when I show and tell it right now, um, it makes a really loud noise, but, but different noise. Let me see, what's a good place to put this? Hmm. And I'm gonna turn it on, ah, let's turn it on high just for the effect. So I'm gonna put it right here. And it takes like a second to warm up. So you, if it starts to make noise, you might wanna plug your ears. Cause it has to like calibrate. And then since we're inside, it'll be loud. I'm hoping, I calibrated it earlier, so I'm hoping it won't go too crazy. We'll see. I'm very nervous. <laughs> okay. So it says to turn it on, and you have to wait 30 seconds for it, for it to calibrate. So that's, so that's what you do with this thing. And, and so this is my department-owned owned one, so I've loaned this out to folks who are having trash issues and someone who was having chicken issues as well. There was a bear. Actually, this was in was this East Montpelier? I think it was two years ago in East Montpelier. Um, bear was traversing someone's fence to get to their chickens. And there was a particular weak spot in that fence. So we used this to protect that weak spot. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for a big area because the bear figured out, oh, I can just go find this other weak spot. So this is good for a small area, not a large area. Okay, I just put a new battery in it, so it should work fine. Kind of annoying, kind of an annoying sound, and then you'll notice this is a little bit different. So change, so that little bit at the end changes. So it has seven different, I guess, patterns or tones, and so it, it confuses them. And not, and not just bears, this works for a lot of different, a lot of different critters. Sorry, sorry. I have somebody asking you, like, Closer, but you're mic'd, aren't you? So this is this is mic'd, but this is for orca, correct? Right. So so maybe I can. You want to move that black? Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. Is is this better? See what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So so that's a that's a great tool. Um, another tool is just a simple ratchet strap. Um, and so if you have to leave it outside, and again, I, I recommend always using ammonia, because again, that'll cover up that smell. And then if the bear does get into it, luckily it'll get a, mostly a smell of ammonia and not the good, not the good stuff. And, but the ratchet straps work great as well. I recommend you know, using, using two of these, make an X over your trash toter, and that should keep, I mean, this is, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, this is nylon strap with a, with a metal buckle. A bear could easily defeat this if they want to. But at this point, um, and we're trying to work with our waste, waste haulers, but at this point, there are no waste haulers in the state that offer curbside, bear-resistant, or bear-proof trash toters. They don't have the equipment to deal with it, and I don't think it's a big enough issue, at least they don't see it as a big enough issue for them where they want to invest in the, in the trucks to be able to handle it. And so I think it's one of these, one of these things where um, consumers, everyone as individual consumers, can contact them to either complain or to recommend to them that they get these things. You know, as a consumer, it's about demanding these things. 
and again, we've been we've been working with these folks to try to try to get them to work with us. And Casella seems willing to work with us again with the with the bear resistant dumpster that they're using and that they're making. And they did that before we even recommended it. But still, I think the at the end of the day, everyone here is the one who pays a pays a waste hauler. So they're going to listen to everybody else here before they listen to the to the department. And so just keep keep that in mind. So yeah, ratchet straps do work great, but um, it's about making it harder to get into. You're never going to make your trash toter impossible to get into for the for these bears unless we get these true bear proof containers. Um, so yeah, so the goal is to make it difficult to get into and not easy because the easier it is to get into these bears. I mean, if they can get bird seed trash. They can get all their calories they need in just a couple hours versus they would, it would take them a day to get a, a, an entire day of foraging. Why would they spend an entire day of foraging? And I mean all day. I mean all day. This is what they do. Go around looking for nuts, looking for berries, looking for food. And especially right now, there's not much out there for them. And, but at the end of the day, they evolved for this, right? They can, they can survive. They don't need us. They, can, they will be fine. They need to find that food for, them, for themselves. And so that's, that's just really important to, for them to understand. So... And I can, I'll answer specific questions about uh, trash later. So bird seed, this one, this is one where we get about 15% of our, our bear complaints. So this is the next one on the list. So it's 46% and then 15%. And I don't know the percentage for the others, but it's kind of descending, descending from here. Um, but, my, but my biologist really wanted to, me to emphasize that, the 46 and the 15%. And so the bird seed, it's really just a matter of putting the bird seed away. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, trash is one thing where everyone has to produce it. We have to know how to manage it. We have to know how to... We, we are people, we produce trash, we are living in this ecosystem, but we have to also understand that the bears live in this ecosystem as well, right? Regardless of who was here first, it was the bears, but regardless of who was here first, it's about everybody living in this ecosystem together. We are part of their ecosystem, they're part of ours, we're not separate. Everything we do affects them, what they do affect, affects us, right? So we have to make sure that we keep that, we keep that in mind. So with, bird, so with bird seed, again, birds have evolved without us, they'll be just fine without, without bird seed. So, I think the biggest thing with bird seed is you get a lot of people who are, who are, and I and I and I kind of categorize myself as this as a, as a bird nut, and so because I in college I took ornithology, I took field ornithology, and I just love going out and spotting birds, listening to bird songs, and, and finding them and identi identifying them, and I just I do I love I love birds, I always have, and so so I'm a I'm a a, a self-identified I'm a bird nut, and so so but you get people who just really love to see to see birds just like me. And the problem is when you get bears involved, it's really difficult to, 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 to deter them. And especially, especially birdseed. Because birdseed is such, just like, just like the nuts you eat, you know, whether, well, peanuts aren't a true nut, but peanuts, pistachios, cashews, they are such a fatty, high calorie dense food. And the bears know that. When they eat it, they fill up quick. So when they get birdseed, it's like finding a pot of gold. They will come back to that every single time, every single day if they, if they know it's there. And I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, thinking that, oh, well, it's just bird seed. You know, I don't mind filling it up. I like the birds. I like the bear. What's the, what's the big deal? The big deal is, is not a big deal until it is. It, is. it is just bears getting into trash or getting into bird seed until they're, until they're not. It's a, and that's often, often what happens. I've been to communities where somebody down the road will be feeding birds, but somebody, that's, somebody that same year will have to have scared a bear out of their, this was in Barrytown two years ago, will have to have scared a bear away from their grandchildren because it was just kind of approaching their gan grandchildren. I, as far as I could tell, wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna harm them, but the person believed that, that it was. And so the, the grandmother had to scare, scare this bear away. Meanwhile, five houses down, someone was feeding birds. So, so you gotta ask the question, how does that bear learn to associate people with food? So that bear wasn't going up to people because it wanted to hurt people. It was like, oh, you must have food. You're a person, you must have food. All the other people have food around here. And so that's, so that's what it is. So it's about stopping that association. Now I will say there is a way, and I, and I hesitate saying this because you really should just not be feeding birds. But there are people out there who just will feed birds no matter what. So this is what I read, this is the way to do it. There are actually, there's really two ways to do it. You could either keep the bird seed out and lay down a tarp. Stake down a tarp. People don't like doing that because a tarp looks ugly. But then you pick up the tarp every single night, you pick up the bird seed and you bring it inside. Because bears can come during the day, but they're more likely to come at night. Because you can't just bring the bird seed in at night because the bird seed, birds are messy, right? They're animals, so they're gonna drop seed on the ground. So that is, that is one of the ways to do it. You can do the same thing with a shop vac. You could bring out a shop vac every night and clean it up. Again, I don't recommend doing this because that's hard. That's hard work that people, that, and maybe everyone here will do it because clearly everyone here, if you're in this meeting, you care about this stuff. But I think your av average Joe or Jane is not going to do that because that's hard work. 
So that's why I hesitate mentioning that outside, maybe outside of this group. But if you have a neighbor, or if you have somebody who's really adamant that they just love their birds, try offering up this, this suggestion to them. Like, hey, why don't you just lay down a tarp? Or hey, why don't you just, why don't you bring it at night and clean it up with a shop vac? You know, be a neighborly person. You know, maybe you loan them their shop vac for, for a month or two, you know? Um, it's about working with these folks to try to see if we can get something, get something done, you know, um, with a compliance method. Because at the end of the day, what, worst case scenario, what happens is if you have neighbors or if you have folks who refuse to put in their bird seed, absolutely refuse to put in their trash and aren't doing anything to deter the bears, or goodness forbid, they are intentionally feeding the bears, all of those things are illegal. Once you know a bear is coming into your food source, you have to contain that. And so, so if you have somebody that you've tried to work with them, um, or maybe it's someone you don't feel comfortable approaching for one reason or another, maybe you don't know them, or maybe you don't have a relationship with them, that's certainly a situation to get me involved. Because what I, what I do, and we always, in wardens, you know, we issue way more warnings than we do tickets. Our solution is always to go in with the least intrusive mes method first, and then we work our way up progressively if we need to. So for us, it starts with a conversation. Or at, least for, at least for me, and I know a lot of wardens, I can't speak for every warden, but I know a lot of wardens operate this way. It's just a conversation. Some wardens lead with a letter. But for me, it's a conversation first, and then I'll issue a letter. And a letter says that you have to contain your bird seed. You have to put away your bird seed by this date. If you do not do that, then you could be issued a ticket. So for me, it's a conversation. Let's call it a verbal warning. Conversation, verbal warning, then it's a written warning in the form of a letter, and then you could actually be written, written a ticket for it. And so that's the, that's the progression. And I've only... I've issued one feeding ticket, maybe two, and those are pretty egregious. Somebody hand feeding a bear or intentionally doing it. Usually when I issue a letter, usually people, usually people clean it up because they understand the, va the value in that. So I just want to throw that out there because every, everyone will have a neighbor that they're thinking of that like that person's not going not gonna to listen to any of this. So keep, keep me in mind and I can certainly keep everything, everything anonymous and not tell the person who contacted me because um, what I do is I do patrol all the time and I can just say, oh, I noticed that your bird seed was still out and I noticed that there's a bear down the road. So I can just use that as kind of a nexus to, to talk to them to start a conversation. So that pretty much covers bird seed. Um, actually, the other method, so instead of just picking it up, and I've only seen this once, but I'm sure other people do it, you could put an electric fence around your bird feeders. There's, there's a person in Middlesex who does this and I don't know how it doesn't zap the birds, but he loves birds and he's never zapped a bird, he said. Um, but he has an electric fence. I don't know if there's something, I don't understand, again, I'm a bird nut, but I don't, I, don't, I don't understand how this works. But he has electric fencing. He has electric fencing around his bird seed. And he said he's never had an issue. And when I say bird seed, he has a lot of bird seed. When I say electric, like, yeah, I'm talking about five or six bird feeders. And we're talking, we're talking about an area, um, for people in Zoom can't, can't see this. Well, you can get some perspective, but it's about the, but it's about the size it's, it's about this size, this size. If you were to take this rectangle of all these tables, it's about that size, bird feeders and electric fence. It just, and he just loves it, he just loves it. So that's an option. But again, that's not gonna be everyone's, everyone's cup of tea. So I just say all this because for those people out there that just cannot stop feeding birds, there are options out there to do it and to do it safely. Um, but it takes work. Again, there's no solutions, there's only, there's only trade-offs, right? So, so that's trash. Oh, I, I guess I kind of glossed over compost. And so I'll talk about that real quick. Compost in a, in a nutshell, um, I think there's a, there's a myth going around there that our, that our bear problems are because we started composting. It's probably a small contributing, contributing factor, or at least a lot of people have told, told me that. And it's probably a, a contributing factor. It's hard to know how, how much. And, but at the, at the end of the day, whether we're throwing our, our refuse, our disposable or our compostable refuse in the trash or in the compost, it's still going outside somewhere is where it's, where it's accessible. So for me, it, it, it's, it's one way or the other. So, so, but I will say that the vast majority of calls, are actually pretty much, maybe except for one that I can think of off the top of my head, out of the, out of the, since, the since the compost law has been passed, or since, I guess there was a, it was the recycling law, and now we're in the composting phase of it. Since that, since that started, the composting phase, I've been to maybe, I don't know, or at least spoken on the phone with maybe 70 or 80 people. Only one of those was actually composting the right way and still having issues. And so that's just a, a good, a good guys for it. There's a, if you do everything the right way, there's a, there's a one out of 80 chance that you're still gonna have a bear. And, and that's just from my numbers. And so the right way to do it is, is to chop it up small, throw it in, put browns on it, mix it up. And when I say browns, put a bunch of browns, like three to four. And when I say browns, it's either dried, uh, dried uh, grass clippings or leaves or pine needles. And so what that does is it covers up the smell. It helps it decompose faster. And the mixing is super important as well. Layering is okay, but mixing it is much better. 
get a, get a pitchfork or something, and you mix it. You can get a tumbler, but depending on the size of the tumbler, most of them won't accommodate that much brown. Um, but they can, they can. A lot of it depends on how often you turn it. And also chopping up pieces small and putting them in the freezer will help the decomposition process because small pieces have more surface area, more opportunity for the bacteria to get in. And, and then freezing it will be an additional thing on, on top of that. So the gold standard would be chop it small, freezing it, and that helps break down the cell walls, just help it break down faster. So chop it, freeze it, throw it in, throw the browns on, and mix it. And you probably only have to mix it once, once a week, once every, once every couple weeks. So yeah, 79 out of 80 people who, who, who I've been like, talked to about compost or been to their home, they are, not, they are not doing that. They are just throwing food out, which is not composting. It's, well, I guess it will compost eventually. So it is composting. But when you're in bear country, it's not composting. It's feeding a bear. So, so keep, that, keep that in mind, that that is really important. And when we get to the q and I, I could, like, like, for example, at my house, I use worm compost in my basement because I have bears, and I don't want bears in, in my backyard. So I, I compost in my basement. So there's like a bunch of little things. There's a bunch of like weird and cool ways to compost if you're really all about it, like, like I, guess, I guess I am. <laughs> so, so, so that's compost, that's trash, that's bird seed. So pretty much the other things, um, buildings, the only real way to protect a building is with, uh, yeah, I mean, you could do an electric fence, but buildings are big. So really the best way is with a, a nail board, which sounds really cruel, and, and that's why I like to call it a bear unwelcome mat. It's a little, it's a little nicer. But at the end of the day, it is, it is cruel, but not cruel to the point where it's gonna injure the bear. The, the idea with all these, all these techniques that I'm gonna talk about next are we don't wanna injure the bear. That's absolutely the last thing that, that we want. But we do wanna cause a discomfort and a little bit of pain. Because again, that's the only way we can deter these bears. I wish we could have some sort of positive reinforcement technique to, learn, to teach them that the woods is a better place to be. But we don't have that. So the only thing that we can do is teach them to not be at our place. That's the only tool that, that we have. So enter the bear and welcome mat. So if you have a bear that likes to get into a certain window or maybe you have a corner of a shed that's really flimsy, you take a, a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and you cut it out to the size of the, of the area you're trying to protect. And you stick nails up, up through it in a two inch by two inch grid all the way throughout. And, and by the way, we have diagrams of pretty much everything I talk about are examples of all this stuff on our website. If you just Google, if you just Google living with black bears, Vermont, it'll, all that stuff will come up. And, and, if, and if there are specific resources that people are looking, looking for, um, you can just type them in the chat and I'll make sure, I'll make sure I send them to, to Rosie. And do we have, a, will we have a list of the folks that attended and, and we can? Um. But anyhow, if somebody, if some, yeah, if somebody wants to, if somebody wants something specific. We can put it on the website. Perfect. People can access it there if they want to. Perfect, that, that sounds great. And so, so you stick nails up through it, but you don't stick the nails up too far. You only get, you only get nails that are maybe an inch and a quarter long, inch and a half long, because you don't want them to stick up more than, a, more than about a half inch, because then that could actually get too deep on the bear. And the bear would still be, still be fine, but that's gonna get too deep and that could cause a little bit of a longer term injury. Whereas if you only get that nail through about a half inch, um, it's gonna get, the equivalent to us would be, would be like a, some paper cuts. Some, which are gonna heal in a day or two. Uh, same thing would happen to it, like it's gonna hurt, but I'm gonna be perfectly fine. And that's, that's the idea. That's gonna teach me not to hold paper that way. And it's the same way it's gonna teach that bear not to go into that, go into that chicken coop or to go into that shed where that trash is. And so that's, that's the idea. And that's really the best way to protect, protect a building. Anything beyond that, so, if we're, so we start talking about livestock now. So, so the goats, right, and the chickens and all this stuff. The, the best way is with an electric fence. And the same thing with beehives as well. And electric fence is the really the gold standard for anything. So all the things I talked about so far, trash, compost, bird seed, uh, you know, buildings, houses, whatever. If you get, there are electric fences that, like, that, that have a ton of voltage and can go a long ways. It all depends on what kind of converter you have. And I'm certainly not an electric <laughs> fence expert. I know what I know from, from this job. You know, I'm not, you know, I don't, have, I don't have any beehives of my own or anything like that. I only know what I know from my eight years of experience. But in general, you want between 4,000 and 6,000 volts, um, which is around, which is, which is a lot of power. And so you're looking around, and, and joules is also a unit they use. So you're looking about 0.7 to one joule, if that unit makes any more sense to you. That's what you're looking for. And ideally you use the net style fencing, because that'll just cover more surface area. So in the net, kind of electric fencing is much, is much better. Oftentimes you see it around chicken coops, that kind of thing. And, but, but if not the net, then the four strand, four strands um, is ideal. And the more strands you have, the better. Again, because there's more surface area you cover, the better. 
And if you're having active issues, like if the bear has already somehow figured out how to get through your electric fence, one, make sure your fence is working correctly. You know, um, make sure it's got the right amount of voltage to deter a bear. But sometimes a bear, I've seen, I've seen a bear, and again, these are, these are the very determined bears, but I've seen a bear dig under an electric fence. I've seen bears just put down their head and just, and I say seen, I've, the, I've seen the, the damage that comes from this after. I've seen bears just barrel, put their head down and just barrel straight through it because they learn like, oh, I've got, I've got a thick hide, I've got, I've got fat, I've got cover, I'm good to go. Once they do that once, even if accidentally, they're like, oh, I can do this again. So then how do you get them off of that? So the best way is by baiting the, baiting the electric fence. So you can do that with either a bacon strip on it. I like the tin foil method. So you wanna do this with the fence off, but you, put, but you put either bacon or the tin foil on, and then you either slab bacon grease or slab peanut butter on, and then you do that on each side of whatever area you're trying to protect, and that'll get the bear to come up to it. Come up to it and sniff it. Come up to it and lick it. And that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt the bear. Again, not gonna injure the bear. This is not gonna, this is not gonna kill the bear. You know, we've never, had, we've never had that happen. And so, but that is gonna teach the bear quite a lesson, which is the goal. Again, I wish we didn't have to do this, but this is the only tool in our tool belt. So that is the goal, is to teach that bear that if you, if, you come, if you come here, something bad is going to happen to you. And so that's really the only way to deter that bear at that point. If it escalates beyond that, well, that's a situation where I definitely need to come and, and check it out, because then we need to get very specific on what this bear is doing and, and how it's causing, causing this damage. And, and so, okay, so we talked about buildings, we talked about domestic animals, we talked about compost, we talked about bird seed. Those are really the, the big things that, that we, we come across. Um, now, lega lea excuse me, legality-wise, so the laws around the laws around bear. You know, some people immediately call me and ask me, "Well, can I can I shoot the bear?" Um, that's not most people, but some people do call me, and that's immediately what they want to do, even for getting into something like trash. The answer, for the most part, is is no. So, whether no matter what it's getting into, you can't shoot a bear at a season. There are exceptions. There are exceptions to to this. The exception is uh, we call it exigent circumstances. So, if you or family member, basically if a, if a bear breaks into your home, or even if it's outside of your home and you see a bear attacking, attacking your dog or attacking a goat, you can, certainly, you can certainly kill that bear, right? Because at the end of the day, it's not what we want, but at the end of the day, you gotta protect your family, you gotta protect your animals. And again, all very rare, like we're only talking about a handful of instances in the state where this, where this happens every year. But sometimes this does get to this point. Um, where, and, I, and I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm guessing, I'm, I think it's about probably eight to 10, probably eight to 10 bears that get killed in defense of property every year, maybe, maybe a bit more. Um, one, of the, one of the big ones is, is beehives. And part of the reason is that bears who get into beehives are very persistent, because that, just like the bird seed, that is a high calorie dense, delicious food. And once they know what's there, they will just, con they will not stop. They will not stop. Um, so, so those small percentage of bears that will, that will dig under, that will put their head down and barrel through, those are unfortunately the ones that have to be, that have to be shot. So, that, so those are some of the exceptions. So if you have something like beehives, or if you have something like a building, if you've done what we call reasonable non-lethal measures, if you've done what you can do, everything you can do to stop that bear, well then you're okay to shoot that bear if you catch that bear getting in again. You can't just shoot any bear you see, you have to catch the bear in the act. Some people like to take that as carte blanche, like, oh, I see a bear walking 100 yards away from my, from my beehive, I can shoot that bear. No, 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 no. No, you can't do that. You gotta catch the bear in the act of doing it. And so those are some of the instances when you can shoot a bear to protect yourself or to protect those things once you've done what you can do to prevent the bear from doing it. The exception to that is trash and birdseed. There's really no reason to shoot a bear ever, and I say no reason, you can't legally do it, for getting into trash or bird seed. Because those are very simple things. We're not talking about anyone's livelihood. Trash has no value. The bird seed, other than what you spent in it, has no value. You cannot ever shoot a bear for getting into your trash. And I say this because almost every single year, at least one person, almost one person does it. Um, I'll give a quick example of, of, was this two years ago? No, this might've been just last year. Somebody um, pretty close to here, I think this was Waitsfield. I think the Waitsfield warden, warden might have been off. But an individual who had been talked to about this previously um, shot a bear for trying to get into his, his trash. This gentleman walked outside with his shotgun with the intent of just scaring the bear off. But then the bear, with its cubs, the bear had cubs, the bear hopped off the trash can <clears throat> and started to walk towards the individual. The individual was pretty close to his home. He could have just walked inside, but the guy kind of panicked and he, sh and he shot the bear. And he eventually, so, 
it was an interesting situation because he called the warden, but he tried to lie to the warden, saying that the bear attacked him, and, and it, was, it was completely unprovoked. And luckily, the better half, the wife, talked some sense into him and told him to tell the truth. And so he eventually t told the truth that the bear was just barely hopped off the trash can, he was in no danger, and he just got, he got nervous, he said. Um, but who knows what is, no one will ever know what was going on in his head except, except for him. Unfortunately, it orphaned two cubs. And so what we do in those situations is we caught the cubs, um, or sadly, we only caught one of the cubs. So what we do is we set out bait for them, catch the cubs, and we bring them down to, to the Killam Bear Center, which is in Lyme, New Hampshire. Unfortunately, that other bear likely died um, because we couldn't, we couldn't catch it. It ran off, and, and it had no mother to care, to care for it. So these are the consequences of if you break the law and you, and you kill these bears un, unnecessarily. And so that's kind of a cautionary tale of, of, of know yourself. You know, don't just go outside with a firearm. If you, if you think, that don't put yourself in danger, essentially. Don't put yourself in that, in that situation. And then you'll never have any issues. Because um, when, when I talk about scaring a bear away, and actually, this is probably a good transition. Aside from protecting all of this stuff, Scaring a bear away. I see it's 7-Eleven now. I've talked way more than tw 20 minutes. Sorry, I'm about, to, I'm about to stop after this. And so, scaring a bear away. Um, if you see a bear on your property, what I tell people is, that's great, take a, take a picture. They're really cool. Um, but if you've got something that the bear is look, looking to get into, you scare that bear away. And when I say scare that bear away, I mean you yell at that bear, you do what you need to do. Make that bear think, think that you are a person on fire and that you're gonna catch that bear on fire if they come anywhere near your home. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Because I have people tell me that they yell at the bear and I, and I ask them to give me an example of what yelling is. They feel kind of silly doing it, but they, they, they're not yelling. They're not, they're not, they are not yelling. And so when I say yell, I mean yell. And if that doesn't work, I mean pick up something and throw it at, at the bear. I had to do this just this, just this summer. I was, at, I was at a friend's house, and, and, um, and one of my friends, she left, a, she left a burrito bowl out on the deck, and, and a bear came. And one of the friends got up, and he was like, is that a bear? And me, I just got up. I was like, oh, here we go. And so I walk outside on, on the deck with the bear. Again, the door, door's right here, and so I can, just, I can easily go inside. I yelled at the bear, really yelled at the bear. But this bear had been doing this for a long, a long time, clearly. Not at this house, but at other houses, and just stood there. So I had to yell even louder. So the bear, bear ran down, at the, ran, ran down um, outside the deck. And, but the bear just stopped when it ran outside the deck. And luckily my buddies had come to help me yell, but the bear still wouldn't go. So then we, had, we were grilling, which probably also attracted the bear. And so I picked up the spatula and I threw it at the bear. And I think it might have bounced and then, and then struck the bear in the butt. Again, didn't hurt at all, but that was enough that I was like, okay. The bear, and the bear took off after that. So don't be afraid to try to really teach these bears a lesson. I don't mean hurt, I don't mean injure them. I don't mean take your 22 or a small caliber rifle and shoot them. No, I mean, I mean, as whatever you believe, that, whatever you believe in, scare the living bejesus God into them. Like make them believe that if they come to your house again, something really, really bad is gonna happen to them. And I'm, I'm really over exaggerating that because when you see a bear, if you don't want it at your house, you have to really make that like, Put on your best act, acting hat and just you really have to make that bear believe that that, that bear does not want to be at your house. And, and there's also other methods that we can talk about. I've recommended paintball guns to folks, which again sounds, sounds cruel, but a paintball gun, teaching a bear to not be at, I mean, people shoot people with paintball guns. And so if it doesn't hurt us that bad, it's not going to hurt a bear that bad, right? And when I, again, I say hurt, I mean temporarily injure. So, or not, I'm sorry, not temporarily injure, temporarily cause like a bruise. And that's the idea, is that we do these things now to say, it sounds, it sounds weird, right? We do these things to save the bear's life. Because if the bear continues on this path, it will continue down a bad path. It will continue to learn to associate people with food, and these bears will become bad bears. And unfortunately, it will only result in one way. And I absolutely hate that. So it's, it's crazy to say, but I say shoot bears with paintballs, or throw spatulas at them to save them. It's a weird thing. But that's what we have to do. And, but ideally, it never comes to that point, right? Ideally, they, if we can stop it at the front, stop the bird seed, stop the trash, if we can stop it at the front, then we never get to that point because they will always be absolutely terrified of us when, we even, when they even see us. So that's the goal. That's always the goal with these bear incidents. Um, so that's my 20-minute that's my chat that looked like it went 45 minutes. <laughs> but, but I think that still leaves good time if people have specific questions about anything I said or if they want to ask about maybe any particular situation that, that they had, I can give specific advice. Um, so yeah, we could do either 
raised hands or feel free to <clears throat> unmute yourself if you wish to speak. Yeah, and, and Steve, if you've got if you've got a story, if you think it'll be uh, you think it'll be beneficial to the to the group, I'd be happy to hear it. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a well. Good. That's that's good. Yeah. No, that's a that's a good story, Steve. I think the only thing that surprises me is how persistent you were, because, like I said, most people would have went inside, like your wife suggested, and you probably should have. Your wife sounds very your wife sounds very smart. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. Some flower seeds expensive, but no, you. Yeah, no, and you're and you're absolutely right, and I think that's I think I think you know you know exactly that now is that is that if <clears throat> if that bird seed had never been there if that sunflower seed had never been there, well then yeah that that bear never would have been that persistent. But who knows? Maybe it wasn't just you. It's very likely that other other neighbors were doing the exact same thing, and and that's that is a big part of this is getting the neighbors on the on the same page. So yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, and and what and I don't know Rosie on the on the. Uh, I don't know if you put this on the website. Did you put my contact information on there, or? No, but I can. Yeah, if you want to put it, put it on there, and you can even type it in the chat if people if people want it. So I can give you my, my cell phone, just so you can type it in there. I was just gonna say it's on my computer, but I can't. Yeah, eight zero two. Seven nine three. Six six two nine. So that begs the question: When do you want to get contact? Yeah. You know, it seems like it, it might be underreported. You know, if I, when I yeah. go to work in the morning, you know, six out of the seven trashes are knocked over on the side of the road. And I'm sure you're not getting calls about everyone. People just pick up their right. trash and, you know, off they go. So for <clears> data purposes, when do you want to get notified? Yeah, no, that's that's a that's a great point. So we have we have a good tool on our on our website. And again, Googling this stuff, Googling this stuff will get you there. You know, reported black bear sighting, 
Vermont, it'll come, it'll come right up. So a lot of this stuff is pretty simple. We like to have as much data as possible. So if you have, if you have issues, you can report it online. And you can certainly re report it to me, but I'm going to go online and I'm just going to do the, do the same. I'm going to do the same thing. So, so for some reason, if you're not comfortable with the computer, or if you'd rather me do it, certainly call me. But probably a better use of resources if you have, because you have the information. So or to just, call me and I'll do it. yeah, there we go, perfect. <laughs> yeah, and so. And so what I will do is I will do the same thing. What I'm talking to all you folks about now, I will spend 30, 30, um, sometimes 40 minutes on the phone talking to somebody about their, about their specific issue. And then once they tell me about it, then I'll put it, put it in online. And, and occasionally I'll do site visits a, as well. And that's typically when there's some sort of high dollar value damage. Or if, say, it's a, it's a situation that's close to a daycare or close to a school or something that involves kids who, who well, all kids, you know, they just might not know better. They, they might just see a bear and decide to approach it, or, or they might not have enough wherewithal to try to scare, scare the bear away, which is re really even children. If children stood their ground and tried to scare the bear away, most bears would, would go away. Um, and um, for, those, for those still here, that's another important thing that I hadn't talked about, is that when you're telling folks about how to behave around a bear, never run away. Never run away. You don't need to stand your ground. You know, you don't need to. You don't need to throw throw a can of off at it like Steve did, and you don't have to stand stand your ground in that way. But when I say stand your ground, I mean, don't run away. Slowly back away, but yell at the bear. Make sure the bear knows knows where you are, and then and then you know just retreat back to your home. Retreat back to your home, or retreat back to, to your to your car. Whatever yeah, whatever a safe place is. Big. Yeah, and make exactly. Yeah, and make yourself big. A absolutely, and that's a, that's another big one. And so so yeah. Con contact me um, when it rises to that level where you're getting a little bit nervous. Ooh. Maybe maybe the bears maybe the bears getting a little too brazen. Maybe it's causing some sort of high dollar value damage. And it doesn't have to be high dollar value. You know, uh, it could be even getting a chicken right or damaging the corner of a shed. Because once it starts down that path, you know, I liked yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get worse. That's starting down now. Now we got a bear who's past the gateway drug phase and it's getting into some to some hard stuff at that point. And we wanna we wanna we wanna stop that. What, what was your website again? Or link? Report. Yeah, and so so just for my fish and fish and wildlife. But then report a black bear. <coughs> yep, exactly. Okay. And okay. and so and and what I can do is I can find the the link and I can either send, send it to it you. Send it to me and I can put it on the website. Perfect. Yeah. So or I'll I send can that. Send out a, a follow up front porch forum. No, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. The Google will tell me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Google. Yeah, the, the like Google. Steve's yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. So, so me personally, I've never come across a, a bear a bear with with cubs, right? So everything I hear is either from everything I know is either from other wardens or or biologists or from the bear or from you know bear rehabbers or whatnot, or from people in their personal experience. But what I what I can say is you know one of the you know, one of the attacks that we had that we had last year was an individual who was walking. And as far as I understand, I was not the warden who was responding. But from reading the report, as far as I under, understand, a person was walking their dog. Um, dog was off leash. Um, dog, dog all of a sudden came back through the bushes, and uh, mama bear was in tow, and and ended up and ended up you know trying to get the dog. The woman got involved, and and the woman wasn't wasn't severely injured, but the woman got away just fine. Um, and I was personally involved. I did investigate an incident on my first year down in Danby, Vermont, where a forester was in the in the woods, and he had it's common practice with him to have his dog dog with him, and and he had his he had his dog, and the dog again the dog unleashed. So a lot of this is a lesson in leashing your dog, even if you think you're in an area that's. That's even if it's your own land, you know, right. by the town, by the town laws, you probably don't have to leash your dog as long as it's under some sort of voice control. Is that, would that be right, voice Rosie? Only. Yeah, so you wouldn't be in any sort of vi violation, <laughs> um, but it's a good idea for the bear reasons specifically, but also for deer as well, because they can't legally chase deer or, or moose. But specifically since we're talking about bear, it's, so keep, keep your dogs on leash as best you can. You can have a long lead, the dog will be perfectly, perfectly happy. Because um, this is the thing that you're risking if, if it's not. So. So these bears were basically minding their, their own business, um, kind of like the example I just gave. But so back to the forester is that this, uh, this, I don't even think the forester saw the bear at first. The, the dog noticed the bear and two cubs. These were yearling cubs. So yearling cubs have then gone, they were born one winter, and then they go through a whole second winter. They basically learn how to, again, hibernate, finger quotes. They learn how to hibernate 
with the mom, and then they're on their own. But they don't get kicked on their own till, till summertime. So this was, in, this was in spring or early summer. So, so the bear chases after the two cubs. Two, the two yearling cubs, they hightail it. The mom, does not go after, does, the mom does not go after the bear. The mom does not go after the cubs. The mom beelines it straight for the guy, straight for the forester. And we're talking from like 100, 150 yards out. And the thing's not stopping. The thing doesn't make a noise. thing's not stopping. And, and that's, that's, a bad, that's a bad sign. So a bear, a, if a bear just starts running at you without making a sound, or any animal without making a sound, that's a good cue that something bad's about, about to happen. <laughs> again, again, that's, that's a very, very rare. This is a very rare instance. But generally, people get really nervous when they hear a bear, when they hear it clack its jaws, when they hear it woofing. If it's making noise, it's trying to intimidate you. It has no interest in fighting you or hurting you. It wants you to just walk away. That's what it's trying to do. This bear made no noise, charged this person. Luckily, this forester had a firearm on him and ended up shooting and killing the bear. And the bear dropped about six yards from him. Um, and luckily, the yearling cubs were old enough and they were about to be kicked on their own anyway. The yearling cubs were perfectly fine. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, Steve, but in a, in a nutshell, it is best to avoid that situation if you can, but you can't predict that. You can't predict what bears you're gonna run into in the woods. So when you come across the, a bear, Assume, assume it's a female with cubs, and, but you're gonna act the same way anyway. You're gonna act the same exact way. You're gonna make yourself big, loud, keep your eyes on it, slowly, slowly back away, right? It's gonna be the same protocol uh, either way. And I think the only lesson that I've learned over my eight years is if you are walking with a dog, keep, keep your dog on a leash. Um, and I, can think, I think of at least, it's at least three instances like that that I can think of that involve the dog, yeah. It can, it can, but if we're talking about a mama with cubs, that's not gonna happen. Um, the, mama's, the mama's not gonna leave. And, and, you, and you making yourself big with a mama and cubs is not to say, hey, I'm bigger than you, get out of here. It's to, say, it's to say, hey, I'm here, I'm leaving. And you know, when I say yell at it, like you're yelling at, bear, hey, hey, get out of here, bear, and you're leaving. You are never gonna be able to scare away a mama with cubs if the mama believes that the cubs are threatened. Well, I shouldn't say never. Never say never, avoid saying always. But that's gonna be a much different situation if you come across a, year, a yearling cub who's still very, very skittish, right? Which will again be different if you come across a big male who's the, the, you know, the king of the jungle and nothing's ever bothered him in his life. So it kind of brings me to a point that I wanted to make, which was every bear is different, every situation, is, is different. Every bear is gonna have a different experience, um, just, just like all of us. So what might work with one bear, some people say they put bleach in their trash and that's always worked. Well, that might work, but we don't recommend it because ammonia works better, right? Cat litter works better. And so every bear is, is different. And that includes mama and cubs, that includes big males, that includes little bears. And so when we're talking about all these things, you're really gonna have to play a game of chess with these bears and you could go to the highest level of intervention, you know, you could use ammonia. You could get the critter getter, critter getter here. You could, you could, you could get an electric fence. You could do it. You could do it all right from the get-go. But generally, I recommend that people start with the lowest level of intervention and work your way up. But really, it's all about your personality as well. If you're just an all-in kind of person and you want to make sure that your stuff is as safe as possible, again, there's no solutions, only trade-offs. You'd have to spend more money up front, more time up front. But in the long run, it'd be much better for you, better for the bears and better for whatever you're trying to trying to protect. Come on, I thought people would have specific examples of... Well, I live in Berlin, and yeah. we have upstairs, downstairs apartment. Yeah. So, and we have no shed, no any place to put our garbage. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, I'm, I'm a good composter. I throw my stuff in the freezer, and then I take it off to some place to yep. compost it. My neighbor downstairs, not so much. <coughs> and, you know, they don't recycle either. So yep. they're not cleaning out their cottage cheese containers or whatever. But of course, because I'm the upstairs neighbor near the road, I'm the one that's got to pick up the garbage when it gets screwed across the yard. Yeah. So anyway, I started doing the kitty litter thing, and I started putting my cat litter in her box. And she was upset because I was using mm -hmm. her. And I'm like, well, you know, you have two choices. You can either let me put my kitty litter in there, or you can start cleaning, you know, dealing with your trash on your own. Mm. Um, fortunately, that neighbor no longer lives there, but anyway. Yeah. Um, 
so the kidney liver has worked. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you know, the cat gets cleaned out frequently, but you know, you layer it, and it works. So ammonia is probably better. Yeah, but cat, but cat litter works. Yeah, because yeah, it does have ammonia in it. And what, and what was the, what was the trash situation at that, uh, at that apartment? Um, was there a dumpster or no, what? No, it was just the toters. Just the toters. toters yeah. Was, you know, so we had four toters, two recycling, and yeah. two. And, so, and was yeah. that included in the rent? Uh -huh. It was included in the rent. Okay. Yeah, and, and sometimes with that, and, and apartment buildings can be tough because you have to convince <coughs> the landlord to do something. Well, I had a property management company. Okay. I talked with them, and they're like, well, you know, tie it up, use, yep. know, use a bungee cord. And I'm like, yeah, that isn't going to work. Yeah. I mean, this was a mama bear with two cups. Yeah. We saw them. Yeah. I put out a game camera. So, you know, I knew it's like, okay, we've got to... We've got to deal with this, otherwise yeah. they're going to be here all the time. Yeah, and if anyone knows someone who lives in an apartment building or if you live in an apartment building and you're having issues, yeah, you got to work with the property manager or the, or the landlord. I mean, you can always try to, I mean, apartment buildings are tough because you can just leave the trash inside, you know, consolidate your trash as best you can. Don't bring it out until the pickup, until the pickup day. And, but in an apartment, that's going to be tough. I mean, well, yeah, and tra weeks yeah it's going to, it's going <laughs> to smell. Composting helps with that. It's going to make sure that the trash doesn't smell yeah. as bad. But still, if you're, you don't want trash just in, in the back bathroom, right? right? So really the best thing to do and what I recommend to folks, a relatively inexpensive thing for, mo for most landlords to do is to build some sort of steel cage. Yeah. Like use chain link fencing. Again, a bear could break into it if they wanted. Either a steel, a steel cage enclosure that just has a simple, simple latch, um, something, you know, maybe just a carabiner that a bear likely won't be able to, to defeat, you know, with just, you know, in each post would be concrete into the ground. Or even something like, um, something uh, ideally built something out of other than pallets, but some sort of equivalent wooden structure. That, that has, again, a clip, a clip on it, just makes it more difficult for the bear to get into it. That plus ammonia would, li would likely help. And, but yeah, apartment buildings are tough because you gotta get the landlord on board. My, my, one of my counterparts, Katie Palmer in the Hardwick area, she has a trailer park, which is again, managed by a property manager. And the property manager, used, they used to be dumpsters, but now they've gotten rid of the dumpsters and now they're all individual toters. And basically the residents there are just very upset. They don't know, they don't, and they have, they have bears. And so they don't have really any solutions because that property manager really isn't really willing to, to work with them. And so that leaves us as law enforcement and, and the residents as in a real weird spot because us as law enforcement, you know, we can order somebody cont to contain their trash or contain their bird seed, but if it's the property manager's fault, I really need to get the property manager a ticket or, or a letter, but I can't really do that because they're not the ones, it's not there. So it creates a very, a very awkward position. And really the best thing to do is to get all the tenants on board and, and, and either, I don't know, a, a petition or you can, and you can certainly contact me as well or somebody, one of my counterparts, and we can talk to the, to the property manager. We've had some success with that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the same thing as trying to convince Casella or Myers or some of these other waste haulers to go to the, to the bear, bear proof dumpsters. It's just, uh, we can make suggestions, we can tell them what we believe is best, but private entities are private entities, and you know, and, um, and yeah, that is a delicate situation. Well, but. this situation resolved itself because my landlord now lives downstairs and he lets me do it. Well, there we go, <laughs> there we go. And some of this stuff is a self-correcting is a self problem. It, and it will self-correct it just because if somebody has a, a, a close run-in with a bear, well, they're probably, it's probably going to teach them that they need to clean up their act, right? However, what damage is going to be done in that meantime? And what kind of damage is going to be done to other folks because of what that bear has learned before that person learned their lesson, right? And so that's, that's what I'm concerned about there. But yeah. So we'll see if they come back. Yeah, we'll spring, see. Because last spring we did okay. Yeah, there's another warden who covers, who covers Berlin. And, and that's another thing as well. If you, if you folks lose this phone number, um, all of my, my numbers, public, that cell phone, well, that's, that's, that's this. That's great map. Exactly. Yeah, that gets me. That gets you to this phone number right here. I have it on all the time. I'm on call 24/7. Just if, if you have a bear issue, please don't. If if it can wait till morning, please just don't wake me and my wife up at 2 a.m. for something that's not an emergency, please. Um, um, but uh, but yeah, that's my that's my cell phone. And but if you lose it for some reason, if you just Google contact a Vermont game warden, yeah yeah, it'll bring you to bring you to our website. You can even call 911 and they'll give you the right. Exactly. We dispatch through our state, through state police. We lease, or, or I'm not exactly sure how it works, but, uh, but anyhow, state, poli reason. state police essentially helps us and they dispatch for us. So, so 911 goes to state police and then get you in contact with us with a local warden if there is an emergency. Absolutely. Yeah. So, did you have a question, JP? No, I was, uh, I've got bear, uh, beehives, bear hives. Yeah. 
um, and I got the four strand rigid wire, and I baited it before, and that really ticks the neighbor's dog off. So, yeah. so they've learned real quick not to go around my bees. Yeah. Um, but I've got a trail cam set up and had a big uh, male bear walking by, well over 300 pounds, didn't do any damage to the bees, or must have you know sensed the fence and yep. just moved on. My issue is is late fall, early spring. When I have snow, I've got my bottom strand six inches from the ground, and everything's going to short out. So yeah. I, and it's a solar charger because it's far away from the house, so I take that in for the winter time, and I've got a metal strap uh, to secure the beehives during the winter time over their cozy blanket. Unfortunately, I haven't had any issues with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that's quite an investment for somebody. I mean, bee equipment is yeah. pretty expensive anyway, and then you add another three, four hundred dollars for electric fence. Um, it gets quite expensive. And a couple of years ago, we started doing quail, and we raise them in a hutch similar to a rabbit hutch and they smell they got seed all over the place and i know it's only a matter of time and sure enough one day daylight bear comes walking up i chase it off yep. holler at it it runs away i gave you a call you offered some great information i skimped on the critter getter and got the cheaper ones that you were talking about <laughs> and they didn't work or, or they yeah. worked too well but they don't shut off so, okay. Yeah. You know, something walks by him at two o'clock in the morning. My wife's freaking out, thinking yeah. it's a bear, and it was just a flying squirrel or something. Yeah. But it goes off until you shut the thing off. So I'm going to get a picture of that. Yeah. Uh, but and, I, and I can include a, a I can include a link to this as well because the, the, this. Are you on commission for those? No. <laughs> no. No. This is just something. Not even every warden has these anymore, I guess. But I got issued this when I started. So this thing is like ten years old now. If if not more, they're made, they're made in America, or at least they're assembled in America. I don't know where the parts c come from, and so that's part of the reason why they're, why they're expensive. But you can't get them on Amazon. You can only get them from this person's website. Right. And so they're, I don't know, very, very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, but does the state offer any, any programs to help protect, whether it's bees or chickens or goats or anything, or is it all just knowledge -based? That's a, that's a great question. And one, one thing before I forget, the, the difference between this one is it's not just motion sense. Um, from what I remember from their website is that this is also, this dete detects not just motion, but I think it's infrared as well, which is why it's more expensive. Uh -huh. so, it, so it's not gonna get, sense, it's not gonna get. The wind blows and it goes off? Yeah, it's not, that's not gonna happen. Not that, that's, that's not gonna happen, yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's that. So pro, programs, there's really, there's really no, programs that I know of. There are programs out there and we we can reimburse if there is if there is damage after the fact. And and but there's there's T's that have to be crossed no, and I's that I's that, that have to be dotted there as long as, as ma to again make sure that you've got electric fence to make sure it's up to up to up to snuff so to speak. Yeah. And but uh, but you're talking about more preventative programs, like like is that what you're kind of talking about? Like like maybe giving somebody money for an electric fence or something like that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously there would be a, I'm sure a need for that. Yeah. Um, and if you can afford the bee equipment, you probably afford the. the yeah, and that's too. and that's certainly and that's certainly and that's certainly part of it. But um, but yeah. Money is absolutely absolutely a factor, which is why we kind of have part of the reason why we have this tiered tiered response to things, and and but yeah, whether you're talking about that or whether you're talking, I was having a conversation with with um, with somebody the other day that there there are organizations out there um, that that have an interest. You know, we don't we certainly don't. The my employer, the department, certainly doesn't align with everything that they. Uh, agree everything that they align with, but they try to do a lot of good things. One example is protect our, protect our wildlife. I don't know, again, I'm, uh, they don't agree with everything that the department agrees with, but they, but they have an interest in protecting wildlife. So if you have, say, you know, I don't know if a beehive situation would be, would be appropriate, but let's say you have a neighbor who's, maybe they're on Social Security, um, they have, you know, maybe they just don't have the money or the funds to even buy ratchet straps, right? Or to even, you know, maybe they just, maybe, maybe funds can be gathered from some of these nonprofits um, or just th through donations through the community, or maybe just neighbors being neighbors can put something together. Yeah, no. But to, answer, but to answer, your, answer your question, there are no state programs for, for that. Pretty much what I, what I do is I've offered, so I, I, loan, I loan this out, I've loaned out ratchet straps before, I've offered to, to build things for folks b before, you know, bear, simple things like bear and welcome. I'm not gonna go and build a, a whole structure, but something simple. And, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, is there any talk of the bear population and carrying capacity and you know are we exceeding that or are we just making things easy for them you know is there you know i know some states have like a spring bear hunt mm -hmm. you know um I, I know that hunting with dogs is, is you know a hot topic issue when i was having issues with the bear around my house i had a friend with bear dogs and said hey you want me to come up and run the bear off and i was like 
oh no, there's a lot of cars and neighborhoods and that. It's not a good idea. Yeah. But you know, are there, you know, are the bears exceeding their territorial? Yeah. I mean, I mean, are they they just you know pushing each other out of the woods or yeah. are they just finding easy stuff to get now? That's a good question. And I'm sorry, I know we're running late. So. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. I just want to make a, yeah, how long do we schedule this for? I don't know. Okay. All right, cool. And so. I'd like to be home by nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds, that sounds good. No, I am going to answer. I just want to, I'm going to write a uh, quick note to myself because um, you got me thinking about something. You know, if, if people's only options is to either ask the neighbors, you know, I'm talking about people who maybe can't afford or maybe sure. don't have the ability to build something. If their only option is to either seek help from a nonprofit or seek help from from a neighbor, and maybe I can talk to my biologist. I don't know if there are any grants. Like for example, I know I think we've used some federal funding, and I shouldn't say that, I don't know exactly where the funding comes from, but we've hired technicians to, to help people with this kind of thing. Most of what I'm doing now, education, sure. outreach, That's handing right. out flyers, that, that, that kind of thing. And, but I wonder if there's a more of a preventative program that we could get into accessing some of those, some of those funds. So I just wanna write myself a, a quick, quick note. Um, grants for prevention. Okay, so population. So right now we're hovering, last, last time I heard the biologist talk was last year, so my numbers might be a little behind, but we're hovering right around, around 6,000 bears, um, which is pretty much as much as, as much as we want. That's right, 6,000. Okay. 6,000, um, which, you know, all state of Vermont really doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like that many. The problem is they have giant home ranges. And again, I'm not a biologist, but we're, ta but we're talking, they can walk, walk eight, nine miles, miles in, a, in a day if they really, really want to. And of course, males generally have bigger home ranges because they're, you know, they're looking for more food, and they're, especially in the breeding season, they're looking for, looking for females. And so, so we're hovering right around 6,000 bears, which actually is the, the top. But what we've seen over the last 15, 17 years, uh, maybe, maybe a touch more, is it's actually fluctuated around there. It's gone from like 4,500 to 6,000, 4,500 to 6,000, based on part of its hunting pressure, uh, of course, but also food, food availability. And hunting pressure is definitely part of it, right? Hunting helps manage, manage the population, you know, keep them at a sustainable level, and of course, you know, brings good meat to, to folks' table. And, you know, people don't like to eat bear, but it is good if you prepare it right and if you take, and, and if you take care of it right. You can't hang it like a deer, because the, as bears, bears have a lot, of, a lot of fat, a bear have a, have a lot of fat on them, and they can spoil, <coughs> spoil the meat pretty quickly. And so there's, a lot, so there's a lot of benefit to the management there. I just gotta throw in that plug. But, but as far as the population goes, so we are basically, we're waiting and seeing, right? Because what we've done now is, I think it's the last three years, we've, we've hit record harvests, you know, for the number of bears that, that hunters have killed during, during the bear season. So we've talked about implementing a spring season, but our biologist is hesitant to do that. She wants to give it a couple more years, and I don't blame her, because after the, the record harvest, and when I say record harvest, and it, sound, and it sounds like, a a lot because it's close to a thousand bears a year. We're it's 900, 980 something, but just under a thousand. Um, so in the 900s for the last three years, and that sounds like a lot considering we have 6,000 bears. But bears, but bears typically the females typically have have two, sometimes three. I've heard reports of four. So what we what we know is that population is super healthy. So over the last over so th that those record harvests have not put a dent in the in the population. So it's still super healthy, super super abundant, right? And so we're going to give it a couple of years before we decide if we want to do anything else. What the data has shown is that typically extending the season, a longer season is typically how you manage the the bear population instead of adding an additional season. Um, so or adding an additional I shouldn't say an additional season because that would extend the season. Um, but but say um, versus um, adding an additional bear, for for example, because okay. some people have thrown that idea out there as well as do we add an additional bear? So we're not we're not there yet. We're gonna we're gonna wait and see. But based on the pattern, we think it's gonna eventually go back down. If it doesn't go back down, if we start inching towards 6,500, 6,600, if it keeps going up, then yeah, the biologist and and the big game, so we have this we have a wildlife management team that discusses these things. Um, they advise members of law enforcement and members of the other biological team, and they discuss these things. And we do a, we do a big game plan every 10 years, which involves bear. And so we're coming. Well, I guess we're in. I guess it's every decade, so we're in year five of that. And so pretty much, we're, I don't think we'd give it five years, but probably another year or two. And again, not the biologist, sure. but, from, but, but from conversations I've had with her, and, and, uh, and she's, she's very good, very knowledgeable. And so I imagine we're gonna give it another year or two and see what the population does. But those talks are happening, if it continues on this, on this upward trend. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, that's a good question. If you have any nuisance bears, do you end up having to relocate them with them having such a large area? Oh, good question. And this, and this being such a small area, yeah. 
Yeah, good, good question. Yes, yes, they just come back. And so, <laughs> so, so a lot of people ask that. Well, can you just can you just move it? You know, I, I even had somebody when I was covering Barry City for a spell before we had the the new warden there. Um, um, I had someone even tell me that there should be no bears. She even extended it to to no foxes, no coyotes. There should be no animals in Barry City, and you need to you need to remove them all. And she told me she was going to complain to my boss and complain to the city, and and I never heard anything of it, so I don't know what happened. That's like, you're allowed to right it, exactly. So and so and I really like to harp on this idea that we are not separate from wildlife. We are we everything we do affects. Yeah, exactly. It's about coexistence, right? And and the more we separate ourselves from wildlife, the more we're going to start to have those types of ideas that they don't belong here. Well, no, we all belong here. It's about coexistence. And so, and I'm sorry, I started rambling and I forgot your question. Relocation. <laughs> relocation, thank you. We will do that on occasion, but it has to be a very specific instance and it's pretty much up, it's every time it's up to the biologist. I think maybe we try it once a year. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll either do a hard release on site and a hard release is what we'll do is we'll actually, we'll recruit. Um, sometimes we'll ask, uh, ask, a, ask a, someone who hunts bear with dogs. We'll ask them to come in and to scare the, the bear away. But we'll also use air, air horns, paintball guns. You know, we'll use those things. So we catch the bear on site and release it on site. But we teach it that, hey, if you come here again, this is something, really bad, something really bad is going to happen to you. And there are some states that, that have teams that, that have warden teams that do this basically full time during the spring and the summer, just because that's the technique that, they, that they've decided to, to use. And I think that can, can work. Um, we don't have any specific, as far as I know, we don't have any specific data on that here. But what we do know um, from, from other states and from some, some at least anecdotal things that, we, that we've seen is that so when we have relocated a bear, um, and uh, mo actually, this state is mostly from other states. And so when we do relocate a bear, and I say we, biologists, um, state, state game, fish and game commissions, fish and wildlife commissions, it goes back. It, it goes back. The, and and it, creates, it creates a complicated situation because we often don't know if it's a mom with cubs. We don't often know if it's, a, if it's just a lone male. If we know it's a lone individual, that is the time when my biologist will consider it. And oftentimes only if it is a, a younger animal, a yearling, that probably can still learn its lesson. And, and is at the point where it's been kicked out by its, by its mom at that point. It'll probably, because it hasn't established its range yet, it hasn't learned all the bad habits, there's a chance that that bear might be able to be relocated and accustomed to somewhere else. It's a rebellious teenager. Yes, exactly. There is a chance for that, for that bear. The problem is we can't do that. We can't do that for every bear. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons for that. There are some states, I think even New Hampshire does it a bunch, and, and, but New Hampshire's not a big state either. The reason why we don't do it here is because A, we know it doesn't work, but, but B, let's say we did do that. We can't, we can't bring all the bears to Pennsylvania. We can't bring all the bears to New York. We can't bring them to New, to New Hampshire. So, and we only have so many big woods in this state. We've got Green Mountain National Forest. We have some federal, we have a bunch of federal land up in the Northeast Kingdom, but we can't bring, and we get, we get I think, I'm, try, I'm, I'm not gonna get these numbers right, but we're into, we're into close to like 15, 1600 bear complaints a year. Um, I think our record year was in 20, 2022, I think. And, but anyhow, a lot of bear complaints. And a lot of these people ask us to relocate the bear. So if we, if we took, so if we took, but yeah, let, exactly, let's say we took half of those. If we took 750 bears every single year and put them in the same pieces of land, the only piece of land that we could relocate them, those areas would just be inundated. And they would just, they would just tear each other apart. And then there, there would just be absolute havoc for those spillover towns. It would just be, yeah, it just would not work. I think some of these bigger states can, can get away with it. Um, but, it, and honestly, I think the states that do do it, it's, it's a big public relations thing. Yeah, because people like the idea. It's the same reason people legally can't do this, but people like to, you know, trap the raccoon that's in their that's in their garage and move it elsewhere. And but you legally can't do that. And there's a lot of reasons. Uh, raccoons can carry rabies, and a lot of times it happens during the spring. They have babies in the spring, right? So then you orphan those babies. So that creates a situation where oh, I, I don't I don't want these babies. The mom's gone. What do I do with these babies? The babies can't survive without the mom. So it's kind of it's it's like it's like that, right? Um, so. Um, Okay. What else? Anything else? I answered all the questions. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, you've certainly given us a lot of information. Yeah. No, it's I. I didn't know. I'm gonna gonna lather, lather things up with ammonia when the, when the quail come. Yeah. 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 You're welcome.
You're welcome. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of little there's a lot of little things like that. Like like I talked for 45 minutes and I honestly wasn't even I was trying to keep it short. Like there's like there's a lot of little things like like things that people say will work. I've heard of people putting putting out like balloons that are filled with hot cayenne pepper and you put a little bit of peanut butter on it and then the bear comes and bites it and then the bear gets a face full of cayenne pepper. And I've heard some people say that works, but some people say it just it just draws the bear, draws the bear in and it doesn't really learn its lesson. Right. That's what I get worried about see, baiting the bear, the, the beehives is like I don't want to attract the bears. Yeah. You know, if they're not there, good, stay away. And that and that's why that's that's the worst case. Scenario. So that, that's when you got a really persistent bear that that bear is not getting shocked right. and that bear needs to get shocked. And also game cameras are, are absolutely fantastic. If you have a problem bear or maybe you don't even know it's a bear. Maybe it is a rac maybe it's just a giant raccoon. Someone, someone called me today and said that there was a raccoon dumping over a 40 pound block off of their, tra off their trash container. And they said that they, do they double strapped it with ratchet straps and they said a raccoon is getting into it. I don't believe it. But he's, he swears it's a raccoon. And so use, use trail cameras. Use trail cameras to find out, okay, how is this bear defeating my whatever it is? You know, it, the more information you, it really is a chess game. Yeah. It's, it's a chess game and just, and just hopefully you don't lose too much money in, in the process. And if you do, let's try to nip that in the bud. If you start to lose money, whatever it is, beehives, chickens, you know, goodness forbid, you know, you know uh, building damage, that's, you can call me. And you can even call me, there's nothing wrong with a phone call too. Like, like if, you, if you want to submit a bear complaint but you don't know, or if you have a neighbor or somebody who just doesn't, doesn't know, you know, like the things that we talked about, how to secure the trash, how to, how to put away the bir bird seed, or you know, hope everyone knows how to put away bird seed, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I am more than happy to have those simple, simple conver conversations. Yeah, anytime, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I, like I said, I talked to you a couple years ago and it was outstanding and very useful. And oh, thanks. Again, so. Yeah, no, I, I am very, yeah, yeah, I'll do my best. Yeah. No, no, I'm very interested in, in talking about and talking about this because I just want, um, I really do believe that if if I could snap a finger and if everybody in East Montpelier, every, if everybody in Vermont could just do one thing and just just either put their trash away or if they had their trash outside, dose it with ammonia, I, I bet our bear calls would just go down by by half at least. Um, I shouldn't say half because 46 percent, so maybe a little less than half. But yeah, there's just simple things that everybody can do, and I think. These really, these really, I think it comes down to these bear complaints have only really started to tick up in the last few years. And I think we think it all started since COVID. And so we don't think it's so much because of the population, but these bears since COVID, so many people were home, they were producing more trash, more compost. We are now into a situation where multiple generations have learned that, oh, I get food from people. So that's, so that's, our, current, that's our current biologist theory. That's more of a learned behavior and not a population thing. Again, we're gonna see what the population does. But we're pretty sure that's a big part of it because ever since 2020, everybody, everybody was at home producing more trash all the time and the trash was at home. And, um, and so we will see, time, time will tell. But, but I'm full of little tricks. So if you get stumped, give me, give me a ring. <laughs> Sounds good, so if you can just send me the information that you want. Yeah, have, and you'll put it on the website. I'll have the town minister put it on the website and I'll put it on the first forum so it at least gets out there. Cool. So that people know that they can find it. Yep, that's great. great. Awesome. Thank cool. you. Yeah, Thank you. that's all I've got. One more thing before you leave. Can I just take a picture of that so I can get one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> hey, you, you Thanks, everybody. Go.